What is this song? And this song? both have in common. Well, other than being absolute bangers, they both use a 4-4 time signature. Wait a second Damien, what does 4-4 mean? And why is there one 4 on top of the other? Believe it or not, both of these numbers play a very important role in telling us musicians what beat is used as well as how many beats are used in a bar. No, not that bar. There we go. Hey musicians, my name is Damien and I'm a pianist and composer. You might have already seen these symbols before and you might even have a bit of an understanding of what they mean. Now a time signature can change the feel of a piece and it can also tell us what beats are important as well as how the beats are divided. There are a lot of time signatures out there but there are only a few popular ones that we need to learn and one very popular one. I mean, it's so popular that it even got a symbol of its own a C, which is a symbol for common time. However, the reason it is a C is not what you might think. Back in the 13th to 17th centuries, when Gregorian chant was all the rage, people believed that triple time, 3-4, was the perfect time signature. The Holy Trinity had links to their reasoning for this. This was called Tempus Perfectum. They represented this perfect time signature by a perfect, complete circle. Now, they also had 2-4 at their time, and they had a symbol for this as well, an incomplete circle, and this was called Tempus Imperfectum. Despite 2-4 being an imperfect failure, over time it evolved into 4-4, and then turned into a very powerful time signature, and we hear it in nearly all popular music. And the incomplete circle has hung on for all of this time, and turned into a C. Anyway, Enough about that, what do the actual numbers mean in a time signature? Let's look at 4-4. Four, four. We have a 4 on the top and a 4 on the bottom. The 4 on the top tells us how many beats there are in a bar, and the 4 on the bottom tells us what type of beat we are using. In this case, we are using a crotchet, or a quarter note. So that means this time signature uses 2 beats, and that time signature uses 3 beats? Yep, and what about this one? 59? You guessed it. That's right, you can slap any number you want on the top and you'll have a time signature. Only thing is, it might be a bit difficult to count to 59 in every bar, and 59 doesn't divide into anything at all. It's important to note however, that you can only use multiples of 2 for the bottom number, since it tells us what type of beat to use. Okay, so that means in 6-8 we just have 6 beats in a bar right? Well, not exactly. This is where things get a little bit more complicated. Time signatures like 4-4, 3-4 and 2-4 are all called simple time signatures because they are nice and easy to understand. 6-8 however is a compound time signature which means that it does not like to be simple and makes us confused. But that's okay because we can work it out. For a compound time signature the number at the top identifies the number of pulses in the bar rather than the beat. This means that there are six pulses in the bar, divided into two beats. Remember when I said a time signature can change the feel of a piece? This is what I was talking about. See how the quavers here are divided into groups of three? Well, that means that we feel the quavers in groups of three, rather than just six equal beats. There is also another type of time signature, called a complex time signature, and they are also complicated. So basically, a complex time signature cannot be divided up nicely, and it often feels a little bit off. Take 5-4 for example. We have 5 notes in a bar, and if we want to divide them nicely, we'd either have to divide them into a group of 2 and a group of 3, or the other way around. 59-4 is another example of a complex time signature, because we can't divide it evenly, even if we tried really hard. There are many more complex time signatures, but I'll talk about them in another video. First of all, I'm going to write a piece in a simple time signature, and I think we'll just use 4-4 to keep it nice and easy. Let's get some chords down.
Next, I'm going to record in a melody. Okay, now I'm going to write something in 6-8, which is a compound time signature. Just like before, let me work out a chord progression. Now we have our chords, I'll write in a melody. Now for the last piece, we're ready to use the most intimidating time signature of them all. Nah, we should be good. It's just 4-4 four, four, plus 1 beat. So let's start off with some funky chords. There you have it. We've learnt what a time signature is and the three different types of time signatures there are. Now when you go to write your next piece of music, why don't you try something a little less... Calm. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. See ya.